Okay, let's learn about some of the magic of cardboard. So cardboard has some really wonderful properties about it. One of the things when you're working with corrugated cardboard is just to realize that um, the corrugation um, and paying attention to where that is, what direction it's going, will be important because it bends much easier um, along the corrugation, those little channels, than it does against it. So when you see I'm sort of bending here, it doesn't necessarily bend where I want it to bend. This isn't necessarily a bad thing, it's just something to be aware of, but whenever I can pay attention, I will um, try to lay things with uh, the grain rather than against the grain or with the corrugation as opposed to against. But the other thing you can do is you can soften up cardboard or condition it. So I'm sort of showing you that I will take um, cardboard along the edge of a table, which I'm doing here at the end of my workbench, and I'll kind of hold it, um, the corrugation at a diagonal line to the edge of the table and um, push on it with my hand as I pull it across that surface and that helps to soften it up. You can also use your hands to soften it up and here I'm speeding it through as um, I roll it up and crush it, roll it the opposite direction and crush it. If I'm working with really large sheets of cardboard I will often roll them up, use my knees to stomp on them or my feet, um, but here you can see that I've made it really flexible and soft. It's almost like paper. Um, and has a lot more flexibility, but you can also see when I did that, I crushed the corrugation and I made it thinner. So if I were to work on a shoe pattern and I needed um, that front piece to bend across the top of the surface, I would want to put it with the grain because that is much easier to flex and bend than against the grain, unless I were to condition the cardboard. But there are some other things to pay attention to um, in terms of cutting and I'll talk about those in a second here. But first of all, your um, retractable blade, don't forget, if you're using that, that usually has a little pullback on it so that it locks it into place. And this is an amazing trick that I am sharing with you, which is, did you know they have um, little features that allow you to snap off those blades that are usually attached to the back of the handle? So I pulled off that little end cap. I'm gonna... Um, find the side that snaps and just quickly snap that little blade out. And don't forget if you have a sharps container, because you, you can throw it in there, you never throw it directly in the trash. If you don't have a sharps container, um, you can just wrap it in a bunch of tape. But that is a pro tip, super important to know about. Um, the other thing again, as I said, is um, when you're cutting through cardboard, I usually like to make one or, I'm sorry, two or three passes as opposed to just trying to fully go through with one pass. It cuts easier with the grain than it does against the grain. And if you're starting to try to cut um, on curves, you can see that my blade is hopping here a little bit. Um, and that's because I'm working on a curve and that can be a little more um, tricky to work with. Um, sometimes I like to cut my piece a little smaller. It's easier for me to move it around. But again, as I'm cutting a curve, you can kind of see I'm zooming in here, it's hopping along those lines. So just don't use full force. Make one light pass and then follow it again and again. You might do two or three passes and that's just fine. Um, and always retract your blade. So uh, it's cut through and I'm just sort of bending it and flexing it and maybe even just crushing the little toe box a bit and that will give me a little more flexibility within the form. And that would be good to go. So the other thing you can do though is if you really don't feel um, safe with your um, retractable blade or your X-Acto knife is a scissors usually does a totally fine job of cutting through the cardboard. It kind of tears up the edges a little bit, but it's not too bad. And so, you know, if you feel safer doing that, if you don't have a large cutting mat either, then um, that might be the way to go. It's not anything too different. So here, I wanna show you one of the other sort of magical things you can do with cardboard is that um, I wanted to show the detail on the base of this shoe. And so I um, made these cuts and pulled away the top layer of the cardboard, um, the little paper layer, and it revealed the corrugation below. And that can be a really beautiful way to create light and shadow and texture, and it will add dimension and just make, um, again, a really simple material even more dynamic. So um, I'm cutting along a curve here. 
one of the things that you hopefully notice is that I'm often moving the material because I feel more stable with my hand working in a particular direction. I'm going to mark out which areas I'm going to tear out because it's easy to lose track of things when you are um, tearing. And I'm just getting my fingernails underneath that first cut. Now it's important you don't cut all the way through. Obviously if you do that, then you are going to <laughs> cut through your cardboard. So I'm just making a single shallow pass. On this piece here, I noticed that I hadn't cut all the way through, and so I'm cleaning up that little cut. It is important not to just start peeling and tearing away without actually paying attention um, to what's happening, because if you tear away that layer, um, I guess all isn't lost. You could glue it back on, but sometimes it's a bit of a surprise when you didn't intend to tear something off. So um, I don't always get everything pulled out, and so I like to take a dull pencil or a... Um, lead pencil with the lead pulled back and just kind of go through those channels. Um, for this enlarged shoe that I'm working on, I wanted a flexible piece and I wanted that corrugation. And I find that just peeling away at it was difficult, so I just took that pencil and I pushed through every layer of corrugation and that came off super slick. And then look at this beautiful, flexible um, piece of cardboard. That might even be a great idea to use for um, your actual shoe. You um, could have the corrugation on the inside if you wanted a really beautiful, smooth, flexible um, piece of cardboard to work with. So those are just a few of the really cool things you can do with cardboard. Um, experimentation is the key. Have fun.